Well, I think, you know, as a small business owner, um, it's me, myself and I in this room, <laughs> right. You know, like I do so much of this on my own for the longest time. It was only me. Um, I've been making YouTube videos since 2012. Um, and just like trying to figure out how can I have time to work out and read books and sleep, um, but also have a job and not have to go to an office. <laughs> like, those are my requirements. Um, I was joking with my friends, like I'm a terrible employee. So like, I never wanted a traditional job. Did you know that we each lose a different amount of electrolytes in our sweat, largely based on our genetics? That means that there's no one size fits all perfect sports drink for everybody because we each have unique needs. That's why we at Solpre developed the Sync Hydration System, a series of sports drinks to help match you with the personal level of electrolytes that you need. If you'd like us to help you match with your perfect sports drink, go to solpre.com slash hydration dash quiz. That's solpre.com slash hydration dash quiz. Welcome to the Smart Athlete Podcast. I'm your host, Jesse Funk. My guest today has her degree in exercise physiology. She's the founder of AE Wellness, where she would describe herself as a coach, a writer, a yogi, uh, and many other things involved in movement. We'll get into what exactly that means in this episode. Um, she's the host of the Body Nerd Show. So if you like podcasts, which clearly you do because you're listening to this, you're going to want to check out her show as well. Uh, welcome to the show, Alex Ellis. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for joining me. Uh, this may be, uh, for you, the listener to this, maybe a slightly shorter episode because Alex and I have been jamming for probably too long <laughs> pre-recording. <laughs> um, so we may run out of time a little bit sooner. But, you know, this, this is what happens when two people that I, I guess talk for a living and then also have small <laughs> yeah. businesses get together and get off get off topic easily so yeah. um the story of life though right you just like get into something and then you're like oops there was my time we're still moving on but this is all the time I got today so that's all I got this this has been a great episode everybody check out Alex on Instagram <laughs> and a very very short episode no so 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 let's start off it, I'll ask you for some advice. It was a little icebreaker. Um, mm. I'm terrible at social media. So <laughs> I know your podcast is a little bit better than this one. I, we don't do terribly. And obviously, if you're listening to this, thanks for being here. Um, but, you know, I know you've gotten your podcast off to a little bit faster start than I did. So so w what are the secrets? What are people looking for? Um, do I need to, like, be, be giving product away? What, what, what am I doing wrong with the show? <laughs> You need to sell your soul. No, I'm just kidding. Um, what did I do? Well, I think honestly, um, I just, with social media too, like I'm super involved in social media. I'm a millennial. Um, I'm addicted to all forms of social media. So they're literally, I have like time slots on my phone where like, you've already been here for 45 minutes. You need to leave. I'm like, okay, sorry, 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 sorry. But in being present on the platforms and being able to like hang out with my audience and ask them questions. And they're asking me questions. I'm able to find out, um, you know, what it is that they're looking for, what questions they have, what things are coming up. And then that's exactly what I perform, like make for the podcast. Um, and things like I didn't even realize were like top of mind for my audience. Um, when I started posting on TikTok in the last year, so many people would come through and be like, okay, but what about for hypermobility? And I'm hypermobile myself. I can hyperextend my knees. I can hyperextend my elbows. Um, I, you know, first thing out of bed, I can touch my palms all the way to the floor, no problem. Uh, and yet it wasn't until I started building strength that my body started feeling better. I knew that it was something that people had. I didn't realize it was that common. Mm -hmm. And so I started talking more to that. So if you are hypermobile, here's what you do. And so it's almost like we've created like a little community of um, other people who are also hypermobile, which hypermobility, I did a whole episode on that as well. Um, you're like, I'm not hypermobile. I'm super tight. Like everything is super tight. It always feels really tight. And then 
I do uh, something called a mobility assessment. And so I watch people move in a video and there's telltale signs, right? Like the elbow, if you're watching the video, my elbow goes beyond straight. My knees do the same thing. And I'm like, okay, listen. So we're going to work on strength and building strength. And I think, again, just like talking to the people and figuring out what people want and then just serving it back to them on a platter has been the best also most like fulfilling way to feel like I'm actually helping people mm-hmm. with the the ramblings that I do on the body nerd show. Yeah, I think I think maybe the tough part about it, I guess this show. So if you're a listener, maybe you should hop on the YouTube version because you can leave comments. I get comments on YouTube stuff and I can it's it's good to interact with people that way. But I think um Instagram and, and the TikTok is run by my assistant, like I don't know that we get as many like direct interactions in those arenas. So then with the YouTube stuff, I always feel like, like I'll answer in the comments and then I'm like, well, I don't need to make a video now. I guess I answered it already. And then, no, make just, a video. but maybe I should, yeah, maybe we should make a video. Yeah. Um, so that's, it's interesting to think, I think about it. So, so I guess for you, the listener, if you have a question, email me, you know, or, uh, you know, send me a message or follow us on Instagram or TikTok or YouTube or whatever, get in touch. Um, Cause I'm always carrier looking for pigeon. new. Yeah. <laughs> carrier pigeon. If you want to send a carrier pigeon, um, you can do that. Um, just write my name on it or maybe an owl. If we want to go with Harry Potter because <laughs> you're going to need something magical to just find me randomly. Dream come true. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's good advice. So I guess maybe the question for you is like, because you've been doing this for a little while, I mean, was it the kind of prescient nature of social media that you were just like, this is the place to be? Or did you make a conscious decision of like, this is how I'm going to kind of market my business? Yeah. Well, I think, you know, as a small business owner, um, it's me, myself and I in this room, (laughs) right? You know, like I do so much of this on my own for the longest time. It was only me. Um, I've been making YouTube videos since 2012. Um, and just like trying to figure out how can I have time to work out and read books and sleep, um, but also have a job and not have to go to an office. (laughs) Those are my requirements. Um, I was joking with my friends, like I'm a terrible employee. So like, I never wanted a traditional job. Um, and so just trying to, um, I mean, like social media, like, again, was the thing and was happening. And it was a way for me to like stay connected with people because I wasn't necessarily teaching to rooms full of, you know, 80 people in a gym or something like that. Um, The style. So when I taught yoga in a gym, um, like I don't teach traditional flow yoga because people who would come to class would be like, my neck hurts, my shoulder hurts, this hurts, like, what should I be doing? Um, And because my degree is in exercise biology, and I had worked as an athletic trainer in college as well, I was already seeing like, movement faults, you know, like, oh, well, your shoulders are up in your ears. No wonder you have neck pain, your trapezius is super tight. Mm -hmm. And so the style was like, different it was weird like I'm a nerd always have been (laughs) and then I was also trying to bring anatomy into the classroom as well which also was super weird and so for me going online gave me the opportunity and the platform to be able to connect with other people who similarly were like but I want to know the why like don't just tell me what to do but like why does it hurt? Why does it feel tight? Why is this happening? So that you can then make a better informed decision moving forward. So I feel like it was almost out of necessity because the environments that I was in were just not conducive. Like the, just your run of the mill, just like gym person who doesn't really struggle with injuries, doesn't, they're able to just like go about it and not be worried about it. Like that's not my person, right? My person is someone who is working out um, and has, maybe they want to do a little bit more, but they're being kind of held back by injuries or they're like, well, this feels safe. I don't want to push it because I don't want to have to like deal with an injury or maybe they've given it up entirely because of pain. Like those are the people I want to talk to and the internet and social media and the algorithms as like love and hate (laughs) the relationship I have with them are um, allows me to connect to those people directly. So I feel like it's also um, sort of like the right place at the right time. Cause when I was in college, Facebook was still 
uh, you had to have a college email address. Right. And it wasn't until like my junior year that like people from high school started getting on Facebook. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, 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 oh. Um, so just, yeah, it was just something you did and figuring out how to leverage it for business to create a brand also um, where when I get on the phone with people, like they've watched my videos, they've listened to my podcast, like they feel like they know me and also are able to decide before like, do they actually like me? Are we even going to work together so that we're not, um, you know, trying to force something that's never going to happen, you know? Right. This is where I should have been taking notes because I was like, <laughs> intently listening. I had a thought and then there went, this why I'd be a bad podcast host today. Um, <laughs> oh, so, you know, you're talking about people that think that they like, they need to give things up or like stop doing something because of pain. Mm -hmm. Um, I've definitely like had those thoughts this year as I, you know, you, the listener probably know if you, or especially if you watch uh, the running show I do, I've talked about just, I've dealt with, uh, Achilles tendinosis this year, um, which has really reduced my mileage and it's a very painful and irritating condition, um, which I'm hopefully at the end of here in the next four to eight weeks. Um, but you know, I've had those thoughts where I go like, well, am I just done running? Like, is this, you know, is doing this more beneficial than it is like harmful? And I know people that I feel like that's almost a condition of, I'll say the elderly. I don't necessarily mean the elderly, but just like older people, people older Mm -hmm. than us who are like, ah, you know, I, I tweaked my back playing football in high school. And I, so I never played again or whatever, because I got that Mm -hmm. bad back. And it's like, I always, I don't have the credentials to argue it, but I always felt like that didn't seem right. Like that, that people would just, I think you can get, I guess, a life-changing injury. There are people that happen to, yeah, absolutely. but it, it seems like so many people just stop being active because something happens and then they like never try to address it. They just go like, ah, I just got a bum knee now. Like, Mm-hmm. that's just just what i what it is like mm-hmm. it's nothing to be done and so i that's always like stood out to me is like almost farcical yeah well also i feel like we know more about how to maintain and fix our car than we do our bodies and we are fed this story that well it's fine you'll just get a joint replacement you'll just get spinal surgery you'll just get a new hip you know when it wears down and it's inevitable and like no big deal um (laughs) i'm just like ah it's not the same it's not the same surgery has a ton of um, obviously complications there are uh, compensation movement patterns that come up you have scar tissue like it's not just like oh your surgery i waved a magic wand and you're totally fixed yeah and then i think we also because we don't understand how the body works how we navigate through the medical system um it's like something hurts so i ignore it for months and months and months and months and then it hurts so bad that i'm like well i probably should go to an orthopedic surgeon and they're surgeons, they cut, that's what they do. That's the only thing that they are trained to do. So that's what they're going to recommend when there are so many interventions that are focused on soft tissue that aren't surgery that you could be using along the way. The other thing too, about the human body is it's so resilient and so um, dynamic, right? Almost every cell in your body is you know, turning over and completely new, um, with the exception of your brain cells, unfortunately, we're not growing very many more of those. Um, but that also means if I make a conscious effort today to improve my posture and I keep on working on, I keep on working on it and I'm bringing awareness to it, um, in a couple of years, that new posture is now the new normal. And all of the discomfort and pain that I had, the tension in my shoulders from, you know, being slouched or in my back from my Mm -hmm. hips being that way, um, it can change. It doesn't happen as fast as we get older. Um, There's also like a lot of things where I could be like, I could skip that today. Um, I'm now 34. There's no skipping, (laughs) you know, that body maintenance, just like I maintain my car, just like I brush my teeth every day because I don't want my teeth to fall out of my head. There are some things you can do for your body to maintain it that don't have to take a ton of time. 
and by spending some time doing maintenance and then maybe right when something comes up you're like well let me work a little bit more on that and put some more focused effort on that um that's fine again we're talking like 20 minutes a day it's not a whole lot 20 minutes a day while you're watching like house of dragon like it's totally fine you know it doesn't have to be like this big complicated thing and i think so many people are scared of sensations that come up in their body because we just don't know. And so part of my mission too, with the body nerd show is like, let me teach you like your elbow hurts. Well, here's why here's the anatomy of it. So at least even if you do nothing, when you step into the office of a healthcare provider, you can have a better conversation about what's going on, what you've tried versus just like fix me. And then taking everything that they say, just like at face value. That whole, like, like you said, it's 20 minutes, but I feel like that the, the whole conversation around fitness maintenance, um, the, like one of the main objections, I don't have time. I mean, we were talking mm -hmm. before we got recording about mm -hmm. how I'm like, I'm trying to hire help basically. Like <laughs> I, I'm so packed on time. I was, you know, running, cramming everything in to get here to, to be able to talk to you um you know trying to find more time in the day and I, I feel like culturally that's almost like just how we live out of time always out of time no more no more time when there's no time which isn't always true i mean it's it's a, a prioritization system right so like yeah. i prioritized and before i got going before i got working today i prioritized getting going out and like doing my five miles like I spent that time doing that because that's important to me. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's an important conversation to have, but also tough. And I, I'm sure you've had that mm -hmm. with people. So I want to ask you about that here, yeah. like your experience here in a second, but just, I guess my thought on that is that I, I feel like sometimes that's a difficult conversation for people to have because then it puts the impetus back on them. It's no longer an external problem of like, like, I'm just so busy. All the things that are affecting me and I'm out of time. It's now it's uh, like, no, you really do have a choice. And if you put priority on it, like you can drop something out. Like if say you it, say you're accurate, you literally have no more time in the day, like, and you've got to drop something. Well, what can you drop? Why, you know, and then, what's the least important thing to you that, that can be dropped mm -hmm. um and then just having that tough conversation of like is my long-term mobility more important to me than whatever it is watching house of dragon you obviously you mm -hmm. said like you can do you do both at the same time but you can just, multitask it's possible you can multitask a little bit um but yeah so it's, it having that conversation i think is is tough for people because if they're you're facing a lot of, I don't want to say like inner turmoil, but, um, you know, roadblocks you kind of put in your own way. Yeah. I mean, I actually was thinking about this this week too. Um, having time is a privilege. I just want to like acknowledge that. First of all, I know, I mean, you have a new baby too. Like, I'm sure like that's a whole thing, you know, I don't have yeah. kids, so I don't know. I'm, I'm fortunate. My wife is doing most of the heavy lifting as is often the case but for now yeah. anyway so credit to her just to to, to be fair <laughs> um you know so there's different seasons or maybe a time where you're like look I, I truly don't have time um I was taking care of my dad with his health over the last year and you know what a lot of stuff went out the window because I was like I just I don't have time and I understand also that this is temporary but for me and I imagine for you as well movement is non-negotiable for me it mm -hmm. is my um mental health um like i literally don't feel well physically emotionally if i don't move my body in some capacity what that movement looks like can vary you know some days all i have time for is like a walk around the block and that's okay because i got my movement in so i think even just like reframing it in that way can be pretty helpful but also, yeah, it is a prioritization. It There are things that get left behind when you make movement a priority, um, but it doesn't have to be 
hours and hours and hours a day. Like I said, it could be a walk around the block. Um, it could be spending some time sitting on the floor and getting up and down off the floor while you're playing with your kids. Like to me, that counts as movement. That counts as mobility work. Um, check your box, give yourself the gold star for the day. Cause I think we can really easily fall into all or nothing thinking mm -hmm. of if I can't do, you know, the 15 mile run and the three hour bike ride and all of that, like, what's the point? Why even bother when I'm not a professional athlete. I'm not trying to be a professional athlete. It's okay if all I get is a walk around the block today. That's fine. And again, like stuff is going to get left behind. So in over the last week, uh, I wasn't able to work out, but I had all this time to do stuff around the house that I've been putting off. And I was just like, oh, this is it. It's not that you don't have time per se. And again, there may be some people who like literally don't have time and you don't have time right now. What am I actually making time for? I glued a, a foot shelf back together. I've been mm -hmm. looking at it for weeks and I was like, well, I don't have time to do that because it didn't matter because there were other things that mattered more. Right. So, and this is such an interesting conversation too, because like if, and I decided as well, like in my focus with my business, trying to convince people to get moving is a lot harder than talking to people who already have been moving and are impacted by an injury or something like that. They have the motivation to get back to it because they know what it feels like. They know that thrill. They know that like endorphin high that you mm. get where you feel like, oh, I could do anything. Like, I feel like Thor when I'm done working out, even if like all I did was pick up a sandbag, but I'm like, bring it on world. Like I can do anything. Like they know that. So they have that motivation to mm. like keep moving forward. Well, I think, so you said something about like, I'm not a pro and I'm not trying to be a pro and like th thinking about that all or nothing mentality. And I think, I mean, I've spoken to a number of pros over the last what, four years of the show. I, I think any of the pros would tell you there is value in some movement versus no movement. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll tell you that about this year. Like it, it's been such a slog trying to rehab, the, you know, the Achilles thing. And as we were talking about, you know, before the show was recording, I'm doing like a little less than half the mileage I'd like to, but there's still value in me spending that time doing something versus, you know, spending six months just rehabbing and doing nothing besides eating snacks. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like there's value no matter what your competitive level is in trying to maintain some kind of mobility or fitness or aerobic mm -hmm. fitness or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, even if you're not at your peak, whatever, you know, whether that's realistic for you to get there or not, I think there's still something, some value in that. That reminds me of, I've said this before on the podcast and I picked it up from Reddit. I don't know who the originating person is. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but it's this phrase that I've really latched on to. Um, when I picked it up, there's a whole thread about it and people liked it is that, if there's if something's worth doing it's worth doing poorly because mm -hmm. it's a different way to frame it right because most of the time we're like like you said you're like door gotta go like you're gung-ho you're like really gotta go after it and it's the whole kind of mentality marketing is surrounding that idea but then it's like mobility and you know body health and, and all those things are worth doing so instead of going all or nothing, they're worth doing poorly. As you mentioned, maybe it's just a walk around the block. Something is better than nothing. Mm -hmm. um, just getting some kind of check mark. Uh, yeah. and getting that mentality shift, I think sometimes is, is difficult too, because we do want to go all or nothing. I mean, you see it every year, at New Year's, right? So maybe we <laughs> should hold this episode till New Year's and, and yeah. try to talk people off the cliff. No, start now. Then it's like you can avoid the pressure of New yeah. Year's nonsense. Also, I want to share, there's a book called Tiny Habits by BJ Fogg. And he's a researcher at Stanford and they're looking at the psychology of habit formation. And the people who um, created the social media apps that we're all addicted to, like came out of his lab. And I think he sort of had like a crisis of like, oh my gosh, like what have I done to the world? And is putting good stuff out in the world too. Um, but Tiny Habits is all about um, exactly like what you're saying and not only like do it poorly, but I think 
the way I like to think of it is like setting the bar really low. Mm -hmm. So for me in my brain to mark off my movement task as completed, all I need to do is to get down to my garage, which is my workout space where all my equipment is. What I do in that garage is less important to me than the fact that I showed up, which also means every time I show up, it's a win. I get to celebrate. I get to give myself a pat on the back. And I know like for, again, overachievers and perfectionists, you're like, that sounds so stupid. But the psychology of that is now I'm getting the win. I'm getting the endorphins. I'm getting the celebration. And that's wiring that habit to be ingrained into my brain so that it doesn't cost me anything energetically to think about it you yeah. know, or to like convince myself. So if you like make the block in your schedule, for me, it's a uh, usually Tuesday and Thursday mornings at about 9.30 to 10.30. Like there's nothing on my calendar and I physically block it out so that I have time for movement. I always have a choice to do something else, but that block is always there for me to be able to, again, work on mobility. If I have some pressing matter I need to work on, um, to go on a walk, to like go to my workout, to get on my bike, whatever it is, but like have that block of time and then just show up. And if you can do that consistently, then complicating it and, you know, adding more training days or getting more complicated in your training or whatever, like that's the easy part. The hardest part is committing to the time block and then sticking to it without falling off the wagon, even if you have to take a break for the holidays or injury or work or whatever that you can get right back to where you left off because that habit is so well ingrained. I think... You know, I or I wrote this down earlier. And now we're talking about making habits. It's I'm trying to remember what the actual research is. It, so apologies for the language for you, the listener. Um, but I think about it like each person has only so many fucks to give each <laughs> yes. each and every day, right? Yep. And so, like habits don't require you to give one out. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not a thing, but like when you've got to stop what you're doing and change direction, you just spent one. You only got so many sp now. And now I'm thinking about there. Gosh, it's it's going to kill me. I'm not going to think about it. There's another guest who talks about this in terms of spoons and they have a story about this. Anyway, mm, yeah, um, yeah. with so, like chronic pain, right? In yeah. Go injuries. back through the catalog and mm -hmm. find which guest that was for you, the listener. I, I can't remember now, um, but it's just like there. I, I think that that we say. I don't have time, but I think what we often mean is I don't have the motivation. I don't have the fucks to give. I don't have the energy to do this new thing. Mm -hmm. So that's where like that habit forming becomes so important because it like for me, it was a non-negotiable. As you mentioned, like the movement is a non-negotiable. Why? It's a habit. I have the benefit of I've been doing it since I was I'll say 12, but even younger than that, mm -hmm. and just continued right on doing it into adulthood. So mm -hmm. I've got this, you know, 75% of my life habit built, whereas somebody who maybe has not been active or maybe like post-college or post-high school, whatever, hasn't been active, then you've got to basically start over. It's kind of like, um, like if you're an adult trying to learn a language. It seems like it's it seems like it's harder than for a child to learn a language, right? Because like, yeah. like our oh, kids pick it up so fast. It's like well, a little bit. Like there's brain structure there and those kind of things, but like that's kind of a myth. Like a, an adult can actually learn a language faster than a child. It depends on the child's age, but like a young child, because we have a fully functioning brain. But you've got to be able to break it down, and you have to have the humility to be starting over like a child and i think yeah. that's difficult because you're like yeah. i'm this like i'm a fully formed person like i don't i don't want to be i don't want to learn something new and that's the same thing with like starting over with fitness or trying to get into a new routine you you have to be humble enough to be like i suck at this and that's okay 
Yeah. And we show up with a lot of baggage too, right? Like, yeah. oh, this is my bad back. This is my bad knee. Yes. I can't do that movement. I can't do this movement. Um, and I've talked about this on the body nerd show as well. So the, the research, like if they go and they pick like 75 people and they MRI everybody's lower backs, um, there are people who have structural issues like bulging discs and, you know, yeah. things like that who don't have pain. And there are people who have pain who don't have structural issues. Mm -hmm. And this is the same across, you know, lots of joints in the body. The back is like an easy one to look at. All of that is to say you can have a structural issue and not have pain, which is also why you can have surgery to repair that structural issue and still have pain. Um, so just because your MRI says something about, you know, the, the joint, oh, there's a degeneration or arthritis or tendonitis or like whatever. Um, that doesn't mean that you are destined to have pain forever. So I think that that's also another important piece to understand. Um, again, it's not to say that it's going to be easy. Um, maybe, you know, the work that you do now, like I'm working with a client who was, is an athlete still, even after having multiple surgeries, super invasive stuff, he has that athlete mentality. Um, but what we're working on is, can you breathe? And can you then engage your core in neutral? Can you involve your pelvic floor? So your whole torso is involved. And we're going to do all of that before we even talk about why your hip flexors are chronically tight, because that's that foundational piece of it. You know, so again, what movement actually looks like doesn't have to be a full Iron Man every Saturday to like count. Um, it may be something super small, but you're building up those foundational blocks, just like a kid learning a language so that you can put it all together and have a fully formed conversation. Except in this case, it's, oh, I can go back to the thing I used to do without my back hurting. And I also have tools to address it should something come up. I think another maybe symptom or or issue with the situation and and you and I fall into this trap, but in a different realm, I think, is we're so we're so like DIY focused. Like mm -hmm. that we're just like, I'll figure it out. You know, like you and I do that stuff with small business. And sometimes that's a necessity. Like you got more time than you got money. So you do it yep. yourself. 100%. Um, you know, like that's just how it is sometimes. But I make the argument for like, even I still have a coach who assigns me things and like we communicate 20 years in, like I, I'm perfectly capable of coaching myself, but um, it's a time thing. And then having that outside feedback is helpful, which- And the brain energy too. Right. The brain energy, we're talking about how many fucks do you have to give a day? Like mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. it, that was a big, you know, something I didn't have to deal with. So like, I always try to make the advocacy for- people like you and coaches and trainers and because you go like people say oh i want to get started and they go oh i can't afford such and such and you go okay i mean maybe that's a, 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 a literally you can't afford it right now but like can you figure out how to save up for it and then also think about it may not necessarily be like me i've, I've been working with this coach for years I, I don't see any end in sight that's my priority but for many people, I think it's like, maybe they come to you and you're a client for six months or something. Like, it's not, oh, we're going to work with Alex every month for the rest of my life, no, but you I can get, with you like that. <laughs> right. Like it would be great recurring revenue for you, but I don't think you would be doing your job well if that was the case. Yes, exactly. So it's like, there's this almost block of money where you're like, I, I'm spending this money now. So I don't have to spend it later. Like that's another way I've heard mm -hmm. people talk about it. Like mm -hmm. you're going to spend it one way or another. Mm -hmm. Either you work on feeling good now, or it's going to become something chronic and cause something else that you're going to have to deal with later. Like, yeah, you have the choice and it is Definitely. a choice, but like, that's why I try to make the advocacy for people like you is that get the help, get the knowledge to be able to do stuff that you don't necessarily know how to do. It makes life so much easier when somebody can look at you and go, oh yeah, like this is a little wonky. You're like you watching the videos and going like, no, you're actually hypermobile. And these are the things mm -hmm. that, you know, pertain to you because if you're not an expert in that thing you're trying to learn in this case, like 
physicality, how to move, all those kind of things, you're probably going to miss whatever it is you should be doing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I tell people all the time, like, look, I, I don't want you to need me. I want to teach you everything you need to know so that you can help yourself. Because to me, when a client's like, I mean, I just, I don't, I feel like I have it all. I'm like, awesome. Like my work here is done. Absolutely. Um, I mean, and that to me too, is like the greatest, the greatest gift is just to like send you off on your way into the sunset. Um, I had another point too, that I was going to add. And then the, the train totally left the station, <laughs> um, of what it was. So it'll come back to me. That's okay. I mean, that happens to me. That's, that's why I try to make notes. Cause I just get all over the place. Um, we both it's the mercury and the the jupiters and (laughs) they're all in retrograde and we can't remember anything astrology is affecting our brains today maybe it's a a, a, oh there we go i remember it it came back it came back um i also like i know there are some people who like gatekeep information on Uh, the internet and like you need to pay for this and pay for that yes um I don't keep anything. <laughs> Everything I have said and I will say to a client is available in my podcast, um, on social media. Like I'm not keeping anything behind a paywall. Yeah. Uh, the benefit of working with a coach is you can get there faster mm-hmm. and get customized information. Well, it's, you know? it's typically more cogent as well. Like you put all of the information out, but then it's 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 the same thing diy versus done for you like mm-hmm. it, you can diy but that means you need to spend time you know both digesting the information and then trying to figure out how to apply it to you and then using those applications and figuring out what the feedback means and then taking that and figuring out what what the new adjustments are and and where mm-hmm. are those pe- just the whole thing yeah. versus just going like just hire the coach <laughs> move forward with your life um you know it obviously everybody has to make their own like financial decisions but it's it's tough i I don't know like i said i I think about it as like it's going to be a quote-unquote one-time expenditure whether it's six months or not like that's a six-month block out of your you know 80 90 year life Mm -hmm. And, and in the grand scheme it's not that much for the price of like knowledge and you know, being pain free it wouldn't the case of like many of your clients yeah well also i think too of like physical therapy how you finish physical therapy and they're like great well so here's these 40 exercises um and like you should probably keep doing your homework and oftentimes they don't even say that but then you're like stuck with all these exercises that take like an hour a day and it's like okay but what about this is actually helping mm-hmm. right so the way I see it is if I can teach you the underlying why, and I can teach you the fundamentals of good movement of how to squat, how to hip hinge, how to do an overhead reach, how to maintain good positioning throughout all of those movements, then you know in your body how to keep yourself in better positions for whatever activity it is that you're doing, whether it's like moving a couch or you know taking an orange theory class or like whatever it is, Because I think we also have this false idea, at least in the group fitness space, that, oh, it's better if I go take a class because the instructor is watching me. Mm. And as a group exercise instructor, I'm going to tell you, there's no way they're watching you. They're definitely not watching you. Um, There's too many bodies in the room to be able to watch you. And also, you don't know if they have that even capacity to be able to spot when something isn't going well, you know? So it's that like personal responsibility to learn how to, again, keep your body safe through moving well so that you don't have to worry about it. And then you can troubleshoot, right? Like woodworking. I just got a new couch. I want to build like a little console shelf to go behind the couch. It's not shoved up against the wall. Mm -hmm. Now I could just like go to Home Depot and like buy some wood and like, figure it out or i could go on etsy and buy the plans from some random person for seven dollars mm-hmm. or i could go to like ikea and just buy one that's completely done all of them end up with the same result but it's like how did you get there and if you are the type of person who's like well i want to know how to do it so i can keep doing it moving forward and i don't have to rely on somebody else again that's where working with a coach so you can learn how to do it 
and then keep moving forward helps. And unlike the training, like I don't write training programs for people. We do a mobility plan. Like I said, I teach them how to help themselves so that they can high five off they go and they know what to do to keep their body feeling optimal for everything that they do moving forward. I, before we wrap up, I had a thought, or I, I guess I want to confirm your thoughts about the, the group teaching thing. It's been mm -hmm. a number of years now. I used to teach martial arts um, a lifetime ago. And mm -hmm. it is unlike, like say a spin class or aerobics class, very technique fo focused. So like the technique is the thing, but even like I was like as a teenager at the time um, or mid to late teens, um, you are watching, but like if I'm teaching a class of, 20 30 kids we're same thing with kids adults it doesn't matter you can only your eyes can only focus on so many people at a time mm -hmm. so if we're doing punches like i can only focus on so many people at a time and you do get personal attention in in that atmosphere where technique is important but like it's not the same thing as like um as using karate again like when i went to do my black belt, they changed how they did things to where they had what was referred to as black belt finishing class, where instead of going to like a class like that, where you've got 30 instructor or 30 kids, one instructor, it was, you have one instructor for every two students. So it became way more laser focused to really dial everything in and really finish, finish things up. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of how I see the difference between like, hey, let's go to a group class and like they'll see whatever versus like, let's get a coach. I mean, in it, it should seem obvious, right? That like, of course they can't see me all the time in this swath of people. Mm -hmm. But I think the hard part is that like, we live inside of our own brains. So like, I'm focused on me. Like, why isn't Alex focused on me? Like, I know that I'm doing things right now. Why doesn't she know that I'm doing things right now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because there's just too many people. So like that one-on-one -on -one intention is, is invaluable. Yeah. And also there's value to, like, I can tell you to always, you know, drop your ribs so that your spine's in a better position. I can tell you a million times, but if you learn it by relying on me to cue it, you haven't really learned it. Right. So outside of that one hour that we're working together, um, you know, let's say you're grabbing something off the top shelf. If I'm not there to tell you to drop your ribs, you're not dropping your ribs. So again, having somebody to learn it for themselves, to be able to sense where their body is in space. And honestly, that's like one of my favorite parts of virtual training is that you can't rely on me because I'm not there all day, every day that you have to learn it for yourself. But that is the skill so that no matter what you're doing, if you're moving fast, if it's, you know, the middle of the night to pick up your kid, you know, to some degree, like, oh, I can put myself in a better position because I know what it feels like. And I can sense if I'm like not quite there yet. Mm -hmm. So like, there's also like different layers to how we learn and having somebody tell you it all the time. Um, it's just, it's not what I think the fitness world wants us to think that it is. Alex, as we're uh, going to wrap up on time here, so I don't run out for my next meeting. Um, <laughs> so sorry for you, the listener, as we run up a little bit shorter than we do typically. Um, I have questions I'm asking everybody for the season. Mm -hmm. I ask a singular question each season to all my guests. This season's question I'll ask you is, how do you celebrate your wins? Ooh. Well, so that's a really hard question because I have a hard time thinking that it's good enough, but um, I think- Well, I'm asking the question. I know, this is a good question. Um, I actually, I use a, a planner called the Passion Planner. I have it right here on my desk. I've used it for like 10 years now. Um, and I write down like the wins that happen every single week um, from the small things to the big things. And that gives me like the bigger picture because I think sometimes we get like so tied into like the narrow focus of like day by day. And so it's really fun to like flip back through and be like, oh yeah, I forgot that that awesome thing happened. And then I get like a little like excitement from that again. Um, and like another way I like to celebrate stuff is I have a 
small bottle of champagne that has been in the back of my fridge awaiting the day that I pay off all my credit card debt, which will happen next month. Um, so I don't know how the champagne is going to taste. It may be a little gross because it's been in there for a few years, but it's going to taste so dang sweet because I worked very hard to get there. So a little bit of both. <laughs> no, that's, sol that's solid. And I, I'm glad you uh, worked out an answer. I, 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 it's kind of a stumbling block for most people. Um, everybody has an answer, but just like, that's why we're asking it. Cause I don't think I definitely don't, but I don't think many of us spend enough time trying to be present with like, no, like I did do the thing and I at least need to take a moment and go like, like, let's enjoy this instead of just being straight on to the next thing, which I think is, especially for people like me who like to overachieve, mm -hmm. just the tendency like, oh, checked it off, move it on, don't think about it anymore. So that's, how I really like that question this year. Um, yeah. Alex, if people want to get in touch with you, see what you're up to, find you on TikTok, any of that kind of stuff, where, where can they do that? How can they do that? Yeah, best place would be on my website, aewellness.com. Um, and then I'm on TikTok at aewellness and the podcast, The Body Nerd Show. Um, and then Instagram, I'm Hala for Mala, <laughs> which has nothing to do with anything. So you just go to my website. You can find it there. <laughs> awesome. Alex, thanks for hanging out with me. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. This has been a super, super awesome conversation.